Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking again about the ubiquitous British cap comforter. Um, this is something of a follow-up video to the video I made previously looking at a recreation of British troops training at the Commando Basic Training Centre during the Second World War. And this is probably one of the reasons this is very well known, is they were used quite extensively by commandos, but they are a standard issue bit of British kit. And they, of course, predate the Second World War and were used for a long time afterwards as well. So a very ubiquitous bit of kit in that regard. Now, this is folded and worn slightly differently from the previous video I've made and that showing how to fold it and so forth. It's a slightly different method, and I thought it was worth making a video looking at this. It is slightly different. You do see both methods in certainly Second World War period photographs and footage. So we'll have a look at how this is folded now in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here we have the cap comforter fully unrolled, just full length. It's basically a, a knitted tube, a knitted woolen tube sewn closed at each end. And you can see here the date and the manufacturer, quite a nice clear stamp there, 1942. And when I showed this previously, that the method of starting this is, is exactly the same as shown previously. You just roll it in on itself at one end. And when I did this previously, I rolled it all the way up inside itself so that the corners met inside. So the inner corner here was pushed all the way up at each side. And the way to do this in a slightly neater manner is to not do that. Don't fold it all the way in on itself. You can see it doubles over to about there, giving you three inches or so of it doubled over there. So you can see that line where I've pushed that up inside. Then just roll over the sides and it means that you have a much larger flap at the top to just roll this a little further there we go you've got a much longer flap at the top which can then be neatly tucked away under the side and you get a much neater effect rather than having the little tab sticking out at each end just having that doubled over like that makes for an, a much neater cap as you can see there so this is just another method of doing it. It's very, very simple uh, and just differs slightly from the way I showed you previously. So you can see in there where the seam is, hopefully. So it's only tucked in that far. And that's all you have to do is just not roll it all the way inside itself. And you, you do see both methods used. You, are, you do see them with just the, sometimes the one with just the, you can see at the front and back, these uh, corners sticking out. Uh, when some men are wearing them and in others they're folded in this neater manner. So that's all it is. Very simple, very quick video just to point that out. That's another method of doing it. And you, you do see both in period photographs, but this is certainly the neater way of doing it. And certainly I think from now on it's the way I'm going to do it because I prefer the look uh, worn in this manner and it's certainly accurate and, and correct to fold it in that manner. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at that and hopefully it's been of use as well. As I say, it's just an alternative method of doing things. You do see both versions in period photographs, certainly from the Second World War era, uh, where the cap comforter is, is commonly seen worn by uh, troops in various scenarios. And as I say, you do see both versions in use. Uh, this version we've looked at in this video perhaps a little bit neater. So hopefully you found it interesting. As I say, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below, which will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Patreon and PayPal are both linked down below. And a huge thank you as ever to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. Thank you very much, everyone, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. If you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.